Hi everyone, welcome to pal to tech The Fujifilm exposure compensation dial is designed to allow you to override the camera's exposure choice. So the very first thing we need to get out of the way right now is that the exposure compensation dial will not work if your camera is set to all manual mode. Meaning that if you have your aperture set to a specific value, your ISO set to a specific value, and your shutter speed set to a specific value, then your camera is in manual mode. And at this point, if you rotate the exposure compensation dial, nothing will happen. It's now a nice piece of exercise gear that you can use to work out your thumb muscles. However, when you set at least one of the three exposure triangle settings, aperture, ISO, or shutter speed to A or automatic, that's when the exposure dial gets activated and can now be used. Now, before I tell you about how to use it, let's talk about why you would want to use it in the first place. Your exposure is correct when you decide that it is not your camera. Now your camera can help and it has a very good exposure metering system built right into it. The problem is the Fujifilm engineers, like all camera manufacturers, have programmed this camera to always look at the world in middle gray. Middle gray is what our eyes see as about halfway between black and white. In technical terms, it's called 18% middle gray and it's what your camera is always trying to expose for. 18% middle gray is an important concept, and that's why there are so many tools out there that try and help you achieve middle gray. But always looking at the world through 18% middle gray glasses can cause problems. Now have a look at this scene right here in my living room. According to the camera, it's perfectly exposed, but is it really? I have the camera set to multi-meter mode, so now, according to Fuji, the camera will determine proper exposure based on the analysis of composition, color, and brightness distribution. So in other words, the camera is trying to balance out the scene to that 18% middle gray that we talked about. But here's the problem. The camera doesn't know that stormtroopers have bright white armor. It's not dull gray. And if it were dull gray, then that would make this guy mad, bad, and sad to find out that you've exposed stormtroopers incorrectly. So you need to turn Turn the exposure compensation dial, which rotates one third stops of exposure, to override the camera's exposure choice. You see how I've overridden the camera's exposure to more accurately portray what a stormtrooper would look like if it was, I don't know, standing in your living room. Okay, so this is one silly example of a photographer being in a position to better know what's best for the exposure of the scene. But remember that background, lighting, and high dynamic range can all play a part in fooling the camera from time to time. Swap out one background for another and you may find that your camera just doesn't get the correct settings as you'd want them. Now you need to remember that anytime you rotate the exposure compensation dial, your camera is either going to adjust your shutter speed, your ISO, or your aperture depending upon what is set in automatic for each one of them. So for example, let's say I set my ISO to 800 and my aperture to f2.8 and my shutter speed to automatic. Now when I rotate my exposure compensation dial, you can see that the camera is adjusting the shutter speed because that's what was in automatic. Likewise, if I set my aperture dial to automatic and my shutter speed dial to 1 500th of a second and my ISO to 800, now when I rotate my exposure command dial, it's the aperture that now changes. And lastly, if I set a fixed aperture of say f4, a fixed shutter speed of 1 250th of a second, and I put my ISO dial in automatic, now when I rotate the exposure compensation dial, you can see that the camera is changing my ISO value. As you've probably figured out by now, the problem with the exposure compensation dial is that you do lose control over some of the exposure settings of the camera. The camera could, when you rotate the exposure compensation dial, choose a shutter speed that's too slow and you would end up with a blurry photo. So what I do is I firmly set my shutter speed to say 1 to 50th of a second, which helps to prevent subject blur, especially with people. Then I set my aperture to a fixed value based on how much I want in focus in my scene. Say f2.8 for portraits, for example. Then, and most importantly, my ISO dial is set to automatic. Because my ISO is set to automatic, my 
exposure compensation dial is now active and it works, but it will only adjust the ISO when making exposure compensation adjustments. It will not change my aperture or my shutter speed. Now what's interesting is that by setting your ISO dial to automatic and your aperture and shutter speed to fixed values, you're basically turning your exposure compensation dial to another ISO dial, right? As it's just basically setting the ISO just like the ISO dial is doing. However, the idea here is that you're not using the exposure compensation dial except for cases where you really need to kind of step in and nudge the camera to better expose the picture. Let's go over some settings and guidelines for using your exposure compensation dial. Looking at it from the top, you can see that it allows for exposure compensation adjustments for up to three stops. However, you can also set the dial to C. This does two things. The first is that it relocates the exposure compensation adjustment settings over to the front command dial right here. So now you can rotate the front command dial, which does the exact same thing as rotating the exposure compensation dial. And the second thing that it does is it gives you two extra stops of exposure compensation to work with. Have a look at this now. It goes up to five, you see that? Now, if you put your exposure compensation dial in C, you need to be very careful that your front command dial is set to the correct role, otherwise it will not work. To check if your front command dial is in the correct role, put your exposure compensation dial to C, then press the front command dial quickly like this. Boom. You see the menu that popped up? Have a look at this. You see that? It immediately puts it in shutter speed roll or exposure compensation dial roll. Every time you press it, it toggles between the various roles that this front command dial can be set to. And here's another thing. If you have your ISO dial set to C as well, you get all three separate roles to toggle the front command dial between. The point here is that you need to check and be sure that the exposure command roll is enabled on the front command dial if you're going to be using the C option on the exposure compensation dial. Also, you can enable a better and additional view of your exposure compensation values so that they appear right here. You see that as digits? To do this, go into your menu, into screen setup, and go to DISP custom setting. See how there's scale and digit? Go ahead and put a check in digit. Now you'll see them both on the left side of the screen and at the bottom. But wait, there's more. You can even set them to appear if you are in large indicators mode on your camera. Check this out. If I go to screen setup, large indicators mode to on, then go to large indicators display setting, right here, the first one, and then tick this box like this. Have a look at this, there it is. Now, something you need to be very careful with if you're planning on using the exposure compensation dial regularly. If you have your camera's dynamic range setting to either 200 or 400%, or your D range priority setting is set to strong or weak, or your exposure compensation amount you are dialing in exceeds three stops, then what you see in the viewfinder or the rear LCD screen includes including the histogram, may not accurately reflect the scene based on the exposure compensation that you're setting. Now, this same care also needs to be taken if you are shooting in F-Log for movies as well. There is a lot more to this that we can explore, and the relationship between dynamic range, your exposure compensation dial, and your LCD screen, including your histogram, is a vast topic. Overall, your usage of the exposure compensation dial will be strongly dictated by the type of shooting that you do. Some people own Fujifilm cameras and never once touch the exposure compensation dial. Others cannot live without it and use it all the time. But for those of you who are a little unclear as to how this all works, I hope today's video has been helpful to you. If it has, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. Have a wonderful weekend. I am signing off now and I will see you next week. Take care.